Bernie Sanders. Now, this is an article from CNN, the most trusted news source in corporate America to tell you the neoliberal garbage that has allows us to have the s- fucked up system that we have today. Now, this title was carried on also by Fox News as well, but here's what the title says. And this is us again, it goes to show you just how they're attacking Bernie Sanders and the misleading titles that they're going to use, all while ignoring the reasons why Sanders in the 1970s was saying this and why he's still saying it to this day, maybe not so uh, as radical, but still he's saying the exact same thing. So Bernie Sanders in the 1970s urged a nationalization of most major industries in the United States. So uh, Bernie Sanders uh, advocated for the nationalization of most major industries, including energy companies, factories, and banks, when he was the leading member of self-described radical political party in the 1970s, CNN K-File review of his record reveals. Sanders' past views shed a light on a formative period of his political career that could become relevant as he advances in the 2020 Democratic primary. What does that tell me? It tells me that people are afraid again, and corporate media is afraid again, of the policies that Bernie Sanders wants to implement. Remember, corporate media is owned by the top 1%, Wall Street, the big banks, and other corporations. The media here in the United States is owned by six major industries. So in other words, when you hear someone like Bernie Sanders, or when, or when the bosses hear someone like Bernie Sanders speak about nationalizing most of their major industries, they're going to crap their fucking pants. And so... In a statement to CNN, a Sanders spokesman uh, spoke to Josh Orton. Throughout his career, Bernie Bernie has fought on the side of working people and against the influence of, bo- of both the powerful ultra-rich and giant corporations who seek only to further their own greed. The record shows that the very beginning, Bernie Sanders anticipated and worked to combat the rise of a billionaire ruling class and the exploding power of Wall Street and multinational corporations. Whether fighting to lower energy prices or expand access to capital for local development, Bernie's first priority has always been and will and will always be defending the interests of working people across the country. And it goes on to detail about what Bernie Sanders thought in the 1970s and now on the energy industry, electric and fo- telephone utilities, public ownership of banks and corporations and major industries, med- med- medicine, and also uh, they, they, they save this last part, how Bernie Sanders in the 1970s wanted to tax ac- uh, assets of the top 1% to 100%. So, in other words, they're trying to bring up old comments that Bernie Sanders made early on in his political career just to discredit him again. Just like what they did in 2016, they're going to do it now. Now, again, they're the, the, the article does mention why Bernie Sanders thought that way and how why he still thinks this way to this day and how he wants to help out the working class people because let's face it, under this neoliberal system that we've been living under for the past decades, People have been struggling to make ends meet. You have families working two or three jobs just to make ends meet. College is unaffordable. Getting medicine is is ridiculous. And one bad day, uh, somebody could lose their job and their entire livelihood. It's a struggle to make ends meet in this country. And the only people who are benefiting from the neoliberal system are the top 1%, big banks, corporations, Wall Street. And again, again, corporate media just tells another misleading article, all the while people are going to skim past it and think, oh, Bernie Sanders is a radical. No, it's not radical to think this way because right now the top 1% aren't paying anything. Amazon, a multi-trillion dollar industry, or a trillion dollar industry to be correct, pays zero in taxes, while the rest of us have to pick up that burden. Again, going to do it. CNN. You're screwing up. Sorry, guys. Oh, you made a monster chat. You made a monster. I know. You know, it's just like... We're going to rip up a lot of stories it's just, it's just like, you know what? Here. There you go. Again, you keep screwing up. You keep messing up CNN. And it's another misleading article on Bernie Sanders. I Paul? Do, I want to say that quote from the Bernie Sanders campaign is absolutely appropriate. That's the correct thing to say to point out that, hey, Bernie is being 100% consistent. He's, he, he holds essentially the same position today that he held then. Um, he's not talking specifically about nationalizing these industries, um, but they aren't, you know, it's, this is CNN we're talking about. They're not going to bring up the point that like, huh, well, when Bernie Sanders calls himself a democratic socialist, if you look at some of his policy ideas from the 70s, actually those do fit into the paradigm of what we would call socialism, right? When we look at his policy platform today, and a lot of people have this question of like, you call yourself a democratic socialist, but your platform is basically a, that of a social democrat. And I don't think there's anything bad about these ideas, about nationalizing some of these industries. Certainly, these industries already operate in a way that they they get the benefits of as if they were socialized, right? They get bailed out every 10 years or so. 
Right. So they, they're operating essentially in a too big to fail way. They operate with lots of subsidies from the U.S. government. You know, the oil and gas industry gets, you know, oil and drilling rights and, and continues to be subsidized. So they're, they're socialized in that way, but the profits are privatized. The profits go to the owners of it, despite the fact that they literally require the infrastructure of the United States and subsidies from taxpayers to even turn a profit. But we as the taxpayers, we as the people continuing to make mm -hmm. these industries function, basically don't get squat from it. So I gotta say, it's rather fascinating how the U.S. tends to act like it's so anti-socialist when, just like Paul said, we're very socialist just for people that already have money. If you Well, how are they make ends meet, Daniel? Exactly. <laughs> if you have money, well, then it's corporate socialism for you. But if you don't have money, it's rugged individualism. And, you know, this is why Sanders is such a threat. This is why many establishment people and many people with money would much rather vote for Trump. Because, you know, they may say that they don't like racists and they don't like anti-Semitism. They like a country that is supposed to be run by a nice person who doesn't say the things that he says. But when it comes down to it, they're people of their own wallet. And just like the white supremacists from before, the ideology they spread really doesn't mean anything the second that someone has a better way of using it than them. Then it's torn up and they move on to something else. So it's a series of uh, flag posts back and back and back. First they start with, oh, he's a socialist, waiting for people to hate him. No one hates him. Oh, we'll try something else. Oh, we'll try something else. We'll try something else. Yeah. He's doing this, even though we do this thing, but we're not going to do it now because he's doing it more effectively. It's just a matter of how well they can rig a game in what way and how long until they can't do it anymore. And I always bring up the paper tiger analogy because it shows through history there's never been a case where an empire has survived forever. There's never been a case where an ideology or a quote-unquote ideology or way of running things works forever. Eventually, things change so much that the system is costs more to maintain than it generates. Right. And we're getting to that point right now and Sanders is the perfect example of what that looks like. They can't beat him at their own game because he's beating them at their own game. So they're changing the game to try and see if they can beat him. Right. But there's another thing too, because again, this goes back to the first story that we covered in the first hour and even in even uh, previous stories we covered on how corporate media tax progresses. Let, let's just remember, early on this year, uh, CNN and a few other major media networks were uh, showing a video where Bernie Sanders was, uh, I guess, having a summer vacation, I guess in the 70s or early 80s in the Soviet Union. They were trying to portray him as this crazy radical again uh, again they keep on trying to they're doing to, the exact same yeah, thing today it's, yeah the russia gate is no different it's the yeah, same mentality it's, it's it's a ridiculous attack and so even to our viewers and subscribers and people who are critical of us it's very important to look how corporate media portrays you know or tells you the news especially on uh when, when they start attacking certain candidates because you know while it might seem ridiculous bernie sanders is able to build a very large coalition not just the progressives or democratic socialists or socialists or even liberals but also there are people who are independents, libertarians, and surprise, surprise, even Republicans who like some of the talking points and policies that Bernie Sanders is campaigning on. Corporate media and establishment Democrats and establishment Republicans can't figure out, well, why is Bernie Sanders building this large coalition? Because there is such a gap between those who have power and those who do not have power in this country. Already, like we said before, it, there's a real struggle to make ends meet in this country, and the people who are paying the most are working class families. So Republican voters, Democratic voters, independent voters, you know, now's the time for all of us to step up and demand something from this democracy. Now's the time for us to really call to the end of money and politics and to get rid of this corporate corporate media that's constantly feeding us lies corporate media it's constantly you know drumming the beats for war corporate media is telling us that we should worship the rich and this neoliberal system that we have has it benefited any one of us no in fact all of us are worse off and there needs to be reform but when someone like Bernie Sanders into, enters the race, of course you're gonna have these talking pundits in their little ivory towers on CNN or MSNBC and say, they well- They probably all went to Harvard. Yeah, they all probably went to Harvard or Yale, got their little fake degrees and whatever. Um, the point is that they're gonna constantly portray somebody like Sanders as a threat to the system. So they'd rather have somebody like Trump than someone like Bernie Sanders. And now's the time for us to get involved. To that exact point, 
uh, a guest on Morning Joe last week literally said that, and Joe Scarborough had to be like, hey, check yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, you're not supposed to actually <laughs> say what we think. Uh, 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 don't say that you'll vote for Trump if Bernie gets elected, uh, if Bernie gets the nomination. I also want to point out one other thing. As we talk about these stories of corporate media, media smearing Bernie Sanders in the most disingenuous, random ass ways, uh, Jimmy Dore has been sharing a, a clip. Um, it's kind of an old clip from uh, Noam Chomsky. He was interviewed by the BBC in the 80s. Um, and he schools this B BBC reporter on Watergate and COINTELPRO. Uh, but he shares this one particular clip where um, basically Noam Chomsky is making the point that he makes in Manufacturing Consent, where he's saying, y you know, you're you're asking these questions from a very particular perspective because you were hired to do that. And the, the journalist is saying, are you saying I'm self-censoring? He's like, no, I'm saying you believe exactly everything you're saying. But if you believed anything different, you wouldn't be sitting where you're sitting. Yeah. And that's the point. Yep. I want to say something. I think that if you really think about it, if you really think what it means to be, not what the, the reason is now, what a centrist means now, but if you really think, maybe a centrist, I think a fair definition, a real definition is that you think things that a majority of people think. So I think if you really think about this even harder, who's the centrist news reporters? Hardland's media? or CNN. I think they're the extreme reporters because they only cover mm. what 10 or 15% of Americans view. And I think that the stuff we cover shows by polls and just regular people talking. Mm. I will say is, we're more populist. Yeah. And yeah. so I think that populist, there we go. It's fair to say that we're the centrist reporting agency, whereas CNN is the extremist, MSN, the extremists. And Fox, the extremists, their extremism just happens to be towards wealth rather than maybe a right wing or left wing ideology. But I'd say that we're the centrist news right now. If you like that video, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, you know what to do. Also, make sure you hit subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know when new videos come out from Hardlands Media.